Welcome back. In this video I want to talk about creating a label of text that's automatically updated by Home Remote. Now in a couple of videos we're going to actually go over creating variables within Home Remote, but this time we're going to take the simpler path. In this case, my Onkyo audio receiver already has that functionality built in. And you saw that before where we created the volume slider and the information was already being transmitted to Home Remote and it was then placing the slider appropriately within the bar of where our volume currently was. Now we've already got some discrete commands as well, plus and minus for the volume, but what I want to add this time is a numerical display value to show us exactly what that number is at any given time. Now later when we create variables, they're going to be actually accessible from the device that you load this on. But in this case, the receiver already has that functionality built in. You saw it send the current variable to the volume control slider, and you saw us send it back when we change the variable. We can access this variable in a number of ways, and in this case, we're just going to actually display it. So to start, I want to start over here on controls, and we're going to create a text label. I'm going to just draw it in the white space. I don't really have any non-grid space available right now, so I'm just going to place it here just to get us started. I'm going to go ahead and give it a label name. And for me, it's a good idea to go ahead and give it some text. Even though this text isn't what I want to ultimately display, it'll give us a reference point on the remote of where this is going to show up, how it's going to show up, font, color, all those things. Uh, so in this case, I'm just going to put VL for volume label. Um, next, I'm going to just go down here and remove the padding as I always do. And I'm going to actually change it to where it's just above this mute button. This is a good opportunity also to talk about the parent-child relationships going on here in your outline. So you can see where I drew the label currently, it's sitting within this second grid. And I want it to be down here in the third grid, preferably right here above the mute button. Now, in order to get it there, I could have drawn it within this grid, but I can also just click and drag it down. Now you'll notice when I do that, it's, uh, it's automatically going to kind of keep some of the settings from the previous grid. In this case, it kept it in grid row 2, which doesn't even exist in this grid. So be careful when you're moving things around like that. It's not going to dynamically change those reference points for you. In this case, I'm just going to correct it so that I don't have any problems in the future. I also drew it over uh, two columns in the previous one. Uh, I don't want that. I'm just going to change this back to one. Uh, grid column, I actually do want it in the third grid, so that one's good. Uh, I want it horizontally aligned. Uh, let's see what it looks like in the center. And this one is in the center as well. No, that doesn't look good. We'll put it at the top. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I think the problem here is that the center, uh, the text itself is not aligned. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Now, to put the data behind it is actually very similar to what we did with the slider before. Here we had a value variable. And in this, we're going to have a text variable. We're actually just going to use that same volume control that we set up in the previous video. And again, over here on devices, this TXNR636 volume control, it's an ISCP variable, which means that the communication is going both ways. So now that we've got this set up, we should be able to come over here and run it. So now that the application is running, you can see that the volume control has already populated with 50, which is the value currently being stored in the Onkyo. It is on volume 50. And we can actually modify it here in the runtime, and you can see it update in near real time uh, from using the slider. Uh, we should also be able to use the plus button. Uh oh, looks like we have an error here. Undefined variable, it says. Uh, we can qu take a quick look and resolve this. And the variable should be located here in the states, and it's not from the previous video. I'm going to go ahead and put it there, and I think, yes, it's also located here in the text variable. I put it here by mistake instead of states, which is uh, the text variable, as we just learned, is actually used for controlling the physical text here. Uh, so I'm going to remove it from there, and up here in state variables is where we actually want that command to be a little bit of correction from the previous video. 
we can start it in runtime here just to test and it does work as, as uh, anticipated now. Uh, we can also verify at this stage to make sure that the receiver uh, is showing those commands being entered on the built-in display. So at this point, we're looking pretty good. We've got two ways to adjust the volume, large and small, and we have feedback from the controller as to what that volume actually is. I'm gonna take one last second here to talk about the UI of these plus and minus buttons. If you remember back from when I created them, I immediately went and removed the margin so that it would stretch to the size of its container. If I hadn't done that, we would have ended up with really, really small buttons in this case because we would have only been circling around the actual plus or minus. And when we were using touchscreen controls, we want to make sure that our controls are relatively large. That way they can easily be hit with a finger. Uh, if someone has a very, very small control like this plus button is currently, it's going to be very difficult for someone to actually touch that with their finger uh, instead of touching all the white unusable space around it. So make sure when you're designing your remote that you're maximizing the control surface uh, even if the graphic doesn't necessarily fulfill that entire area. We'll see you in the next one.